Hey y'all, it's Cameron the K. Come to you guys with a new video. So in today's video, we are getting into the email tea, okay? So for those that don't know who I am, I'm a lawyer, content creator, entrepreneur, and influencer marketing consultant. I help other influencers, content creators, and entrepreneurs navigate the contract space in the influencer marketing industry, but we also give some educational tips and trips, tips and tricks on the loyalty social. So definitely check out more of our services. I'm saying our because we do have another lawyer slash consultant on the team and an operations manager and legal externs, all the things. So definitely make sure you guys check us out at thelegalty.com. But today's video, I'm gonna be spilling the tea. The tea. <laughs> on email templates hey y'all so welcome to my task management software slash systems and automations and literally everything i use clickup i love it my operations manager joshua put me on and let me tell you i couldn't live without my clickup <laughs> so i actually used to use clickup way back in the day for years and i honestly was not utilizing all the amazing tools that come with it so shout out again to joshua for hooking me up and just informing me and training me on the amazing tools that come within this software. So today we're gonna to focus on email templates, but let me know if you guys want more entrepreneurship, behind the scenes, systems, automations, hiring, all of those kind of conversations. I'd be glad to talk about them. I will start with this. There are so many different ways to respond to brand partnerships, to respond to, honestly, any email that you get. My main thing is always remain professional, regardless of how they act, okay? Because some people try it in the emails. So I always remain professional and concise is the name of the game get to the point because people are going through so many emails a lot of times and honestly a lot of people just don't like their emails okay so yeah but let's start first with brand partnership so brand partnership emails can vary i'm going to talk a little bit about pitching towards the end so stay tuned for that but this email the first one is when i'm interested you guys will notice that all the email templates today are signed by my operations manager she actually helps me manage and maintain my email right now but you can easily switch it if you're the only one that is working within your team at this moment or you have an assistant, you can swap it out and change it up. So definitely make sure you guys do that. So with a brand partnership, if I'm interested, we usually say hi, insert their name. This is a major key. I always, 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 always address the person by their name because I love when I'm addressed by my name. To me, it just shows that you've either done your research or you're just really in tune with the conversation. And it's kind of like a respect thing. So always say hi such and such insert name <laughs> and it says thank you for reaching out i always start with a thank you thank you so much for reaching out thank you for reaching out regardless because with this industry getting the attention of a brand is huge so if you're getting the email they're emailing you about opportunity girl you better thank them thank you that thank you for reaching out okay <laughs> all right so it says thank you for reaching out Cameron is interested in this partnership and would love to get more details. You can easily swap that and say, I'm interested in this partnership and I would love to get more details. Best, insert your name or best, insert your assistant. The next interested version of a brand partnership email for me, the ask for the budget version. So the difference between the first template, the interested and the second one would be, maybe they've already given me a full description of the deliverables that they're looking for. So when they give me like, hi, my name is such and such brand. I would love to work with you, Cameron. It's a jewelry brand. We want an Instagram uh, and feed post. We also want Instagram story frames and a TikTok video. So when they give me more details versus just reaching out and saying, hi, we love you. We want to work together. Um, then that's usually when I, that triggers the ask for the budget. Listen, get your notepads ready. Okay. Because if they ask you for your rate, I still ask for the budget, and so can you. If they say, hi, da 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 what's your rate? I always ask for the budget first. They may come back and say, we asked for the rate, or what's your rate? Fine, then I'll tell you my rate, but always try to get that budget first before you're shooting out a number. And then also, kind of a little extra pro tip here, always make sure you say your rate that you're providing is contingent on the contract. In other words, that when you get the contract, there may be additional fees. If y'all been on my channel for any amount of time, then you know, okay? You know how we do on the legal tea, okay? You know the tea. And on the legal tea social on Instagram, you know that we are always aware that there may be additional fees when we get the contract. So, yeah, back to the template. So, for the ask for the budget template, it's thank you so much for reaching out or thank you for reaching out. Cameron is interested in this partnership and would love to get more details for compensation. We'd love to know what the budget is for this partnership. Boom, straight to the point. We'd love to see it. So then I have this keep the door 
kind of template. So instead of just going straight from interested to, oh, I'm not interested, sometimes there's a brand where it's like, I'm interested, but I can't do it right now. So maybe the campaign is running the, the current month they reach out and I'm just already in capacity. Or maybe the product that they're wanting me to use, I'm already under a contract that I'm exclusive against that competitor brand. Whatever the case may be, it's definitely a brand that I'm definitely interested in working with, but maybe not at this time. So how I phrase that, the keep the door open brand partnership uh, email template is, thank you for reaching out. Unfortunately, Cameron is not interested in this collaboration at this time. It's the at this time, keep the door open. However, she would love to be considered for opportunities in the future. Boom. Sometimes brands also, I use this when they're on a strict budget where they're like, listen, all we got is $3. And respectfully, $3 ain't go cut it. <laughs> okay, they don't, they don't come as crazy as $3, but they do get crazy. So, but this still allows me to respectfully decline, leaving the door open so I can be considered. Because sometimes they have like another opportunity in like the next day. Or maybe it's an agency, a PR agency, and they're working with various different brands on different campaigns. This, this way they know, okay, Cameron wasn't interested in this right now, but we also have this. So she is interested in some type of partnership opportunity. Next, we have the brand partnership, not interested. This is like, I don't even know why you reached out to me. This is completely not on brand. I don't want to work with you, but I still like to respond. And so does my manager. We both like to respond in some way because you just never know that brand might turn into a brand we do want to work with. They might know another brand that we do want to work with. Like this industry is so close knit and small. It may seem really big, but everybody's talking. People know people that know people. People would go from one agency to work with one brand to another brand to all types of things. So I always try to respectfully decline no matter what. Sometimes there are some emails where I'm just like, I'm not going to respond. Like we don't even need to respond. It's going straight to spam. Some of those emails may look like if I can see all of the email addresses <laughs> that the brand is sending out a mass email, I personally, we just don't respond to things like that. Also, if they say hi and it's the wrong name that has happened where they're like, Hi, Susan. And I'm like, <laughs> my email literally is hello at camera Monet, but it's, it's fine. Um, or sometimes they um, just say hi and don't say the name at all or anything that seems kind of like a mass email. Usually, not always, 9.99 times out of 10, we usually just ignore those type of emails. Just honestly, for the sake of time, and we say no in general, we send a lot of not interested emails. And sometimes it's just like, although it may be a really good opportunity, maybe it's some great money, I know it will not resonate with my brand and my audience, and it's just not worth the risk. Y'all are worth so much more than a few hundreds of thousands of dollars, only because it took me so long to build this connection with y'all. So for newer creators that are out there, sometimes it's better to just say no, because at the end of the day, that no will open up so many more doors for you to get a yes later on. So the next email template we're going to talk about is PR and gifting. So I'm not against free gifting opportunities, okay? I'm not. However, what I am against is when a brand just wants to send free product and they want you to do hundreds of seven things, right? So they're like, oh, we'll send you this skincare product in exchange for 10 photos, three videos, and a shout out on your stories. No, 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 ma'am. So my rule of thumb with gifting opportunities is... One, do I already use the product? Am I interested in trying the product? Two, are they obligating? Am I required to post in some capacity? I usually just don't agree to that. And then the third thing is, am I able to get a discount code for my audience? And also, am I able to get affiliates or commission kind of profits from that collaboration? So those are a few things I try to consider, consider when it comes to gifting because with commission and affiliates, quick rant. There are so many benefits, right? So it's nice when you know, okay, if I talk about this product, I can get 10 to 20% commission, it's great. However, if you don't already talk about that product or already like the product, or you can easily integrate it in your everyday life to talk about it, you're not gonna make that much in commissions because you don't already talk about that type of stuff. So you definitely wanna make sure that you consider that when you're accepting these, because you don't want to be the person, because I've been there where I was just receiving all the free products and all the things. And then I look up and I have a room full of free products and rent is due. <laughs> okay. So you definitely want to be cautious about those type of opportunities. However, also keep in mind, it can open the door, right? It can open the door to so many other opportunities and paid partnerships and collaborations and connections with brands, which are also really valuable, that relationship you connect with the brand. So lots of things to consider. But for the first one, um, we're going to talk about, it's a little out of order, but 
So the first template talks about when I receive the product, we have automation that will trigger that within uh, within ClickUp. So when I change the status to received, it notifies my operations manager so she can send this email that just says, hi, insert name. We wanted to let you know that Cameron has received the product. Cameron received the product. Perfect, straight to the point. And then if they have any additional things they want to tell me, they usually either add that before we send that email or after. So it's just nice to let the brand know when you have received the product. So if they have any particular things they want you to focus on. If you do happen to post or it's just good communication, honestly. And I think communication in this industry goes, honestly, in any industry, goes a really long way because everyone doesn't know how to communicate very well. It's harder than you think, especially when you're juggling so many different things as a creator and so many different brands. OK, so for the next template, we have a PR gifting that you're interested. So this is like a brand reaches out and you're like, yes, period. I'm in there. I definitely want to work with this brand and receive their gifting. So this is our standard template that we use. Hi, it's their name. <laughs> Thank you for reaching out. Cameron is interested in receiving and then you insert the brand's product so that they know that we have thoroughly read the email. We're excited to work with them. Just how we want the brand to be excited to work with us. You got to reciprocate it. Right. So then it says my mailing address, which is my P.O. box. I pro tip as a creator, please, 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 please don't send every brand your personal address. Get a P.O. box. Get a P.O. box, please get a P.O. box. And yes, you can get a street address for a P.O. box. Um, and then we also have a note. This is a major key. Please note that in regards to gifting opportunities, Cameron has no obligation to post, advertise, or market the products received. Yes, you need to insert that if you are not willing to produce content in exchange for products. If you are a newer creator or you're trying to just get your foot in the door with a brand, etc., absolutely agree, but do not stretch yourself thin over some products. Get compensated, okay? <laughs> All right, so this next template is if a brand wants to jump on a call. Pro tip, have a separate calendar. I use um, Acuity Scheduling for my calendaring and like my scheduling and all that is connected to my ClickUp and my Google, Google Calendar just so that you have something to give a brand when they're like, hey, we would love to jump on a call with you. I have a specific link that I can send them. It helps a ton rather than me having to go through my calendar and send some dates. I can just send them a partnership call link it's free for them to do, and we just jump on a quick 30-minute call. Sometimes they'll send the link, but it's nice for you as a creator to have something. So this template looks like, thank you for reaching out to Cameron. That sounds like a good opportunity. I'd love to help you schedule a call with her to talk more about working together. I have some availability, and then she'll answer the dates. But again, I'm not having to search through my calendar to figure it out. I can literally click the link and bring up some of those days. Then you can use this link to book a call with Cameron or let me know which daytime works for you. The link to book a call, you can literally hyperlink that, those words, so they can click right there. Super easy, straight to the point, just do it. <laughs> okay, and last but certainly not least, we have a pitch template layout. So I personally do not do a ton of pitching. I'm not against it. I love influencer marketing platform. I love a little warm pitch. To me, a warm pitch is when the brand has already kind of interacted with your content. I also love to circle the block. So what I mean by that is, any brands that I've already previously worked with in the past, I will, hey, big head, <laughs> and try to work with them again. And that, to me, is more of a warm pitch than a cold pitch. But here's a good template when you are cold pitching or even warm pitching with different brands that you love. So I always say start off with an intro and links to your social media. So you want to make it easy and concise for them to get to, straight to the point and figure out who you are, what you want for them, and do they think they, that you'd be a great fit for the next campaign, okay? that You want to get in and get out. So intro, quick elevator pitch. Let's say you're on the first floor and you're going to floor three, maybe five. Quick, straight to the point. And then links to your social media so they can just click straight to, to them. The next thing you want to include is your connection to the brand. So have you already used this product? Do you already have content created for them? Has your audience been requesting you to try this product? All of those different things are super helpful when you're trying to introduce yourself and pitch to a brand. The next thing I would consider is have a creative concept, either that's surrounded by a holiday or an upcoming event or something, and then provide examples of similar content that you've already created. So maybe you want to work with a skincare company and you already have like a skincare routine that's a reel or a YouTube video, et cetera. 
include links to those those different things so they can already see your work and how their product and their brand could easily integrate in the content you've already created. Then the next thing, of course, you want to thank them for their time. I love a good thank you, okay? It really just, it's a professionalism a consideration for me, okay? So thank you so much for your time and consideration. Looking forward to hear from you or something like that. I just love a little sum it up moment at the end of an email. And then here's a little pro tip that I've been seeing circulating in this industry is that to not add attachments. So do not add attachments. So a lot of times creator will, creators will add their media kit in the pitch, which I, def, which I definitely understand. Like you, It's the best way to introduce yourself. It's quick, it's like one to two pager or one pager, and it's saying who you are, brand you work with, all these great accolades about you. Also pro tip, I don't have my prices on my media kit. It's on a rate sheet. That's another a whole another conversation for another day. But when you add attachments, sometimes those emails automatically go into spam. So you don't want your message to not get sent just because it was automatically in spam or it was flagged or something like that just because you have attachments. So I just say put hyperlinks, link to different things, and that'll do it, okay? So I'll go ahead and pop up right now on the screen so you guys can see what the templates like actually look like within my Gmail. So easy to use. I love that they're right there. So if I need to respond to an email, I can just use the templates in my operations manager or we hire someone else. It makes it so seamless and easy for us as a team to be on the same page and not have to like come up with a response every single time. We at least have like a foundation and a template to use. So yeah, guys, I hope that was really helpful. Hope you guys learned a thing or two. Definitely leave me some comments down below if this was helpful. If you guys want to follow up email, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, I am glad to help. Also, don't forget to thumbs up this video if you enjoyed. It helps me out and it's it's free for y'all, but it really does help me in the algorithm so we can push this out for more creators to get the tea. Also, share this video with your family, friends, and colleagues. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you guys want to see more of the behind the scenes, the nitty gritty of how I execute these emails, how me and my manager communicate, all those kind of things, definitely make sure you subscribe so you can watch my vlogs because those you see the real a little bit too real sometimes, but the real behind the scenes of what's going on. So yeah, thank you guys again. And if you don't know, I always end my videos with an affirmation. So if you made this far in the video, comment below. I am worthy of new opportunities. Mm. I'm going to run that back one time for the one time. If you made this far in the video, comment below. I am worthy of new opportunities because you are and they are coming your way. It is going to flow. Mm, through you into you. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in my next one. Later.